this month, November, is Puerto Rican Heritage Month. And we dedicate an entire month for our city and our country to, to reflect on who Puerto Ricans are and what they've contributed to this great society. What you will see today is a performance about Tainos and Taino life before this fellow Chris Columbus got here. And this will be performed by Nilva and Pablo Garces. Tao, that is hello in the Taino language. I am Atabe, Mother Earth for all the people of the Caribbean. And this is Borinquen, an island of paradise. Long ago, over 500 years, in this land lived a people who called themselves the Tainos. This means the peaceful people. And they call their paradise Borinquen, land of the brave and noble Lord. This paradise had everything they needed. The Yunque forest, beautiful parrots and birds, the coqui frogs they love to hear at night, the sea with fish and jicotea turtles, and fertile land for them to farm. They call their creator Yokahu. In this beautiful island, there were scattered over 24 villages, Yucayeques in the Taino language. And each Yucayeque had a chief, a cacique. The cacique had noble sub-chiefs and warriors, the Nitainos, who followed his orders and protected these Yucayeque towns. And in each Yucayeque, there was always a wise man, the Boike, a healer who cured the sick and who passed on knowledge from one generation to another. And then there were the town people, the Naborias, who had the daily task of farming, fishing, and crafts. See what Guati, a young Taino boy, was doing at that time while fishing with his father, Niguayona, at the seashore of a Yucayeque town called Guainilla. Guati, Guati, calm my son. The winds are blowing and it has started to rain. We must stop fishing for today. Oh, father, do you think the god Huracan is getting angry? Every time he gets angry, we have a hurricane. I don't know if we will have a hurricane, Wati. We cannot stay here any longer. We have enough fish in our basket. Mother yes, Bibi father. will be warm. The wind is blowing stronger now. I do think God is very angry now. I was hoping he would fly away and stay up in the clouds. Thunder God, getting closer. Oh, Baba, let us hurry. Tao, my friends. I am Orokobis, the cacique, chief who lived in the mountain area of the island. The god Huracan did not come down on the island of Boriqueng that day. Everyone stayed in their bohio huts and waited for the storm to pass. That night, after the storm left them, the coqui frogs and the mukaro owl sang again, and the village was once again back to normal.
It is too noisy in our Ukayeke village. I will have to see what I can do. The storm has frightened our animals. Ah, there is the moon, our Karaya. Kaseke, do you name it tonight? The Mukaros and Kokis are truly very noisy tonight. Yes, yes, Bohike. Let's see if we can calm them. Otherwise, our people will not be able to rest tonight. We must go outside. We have to do our chance and chase them away. Yes, come. I think I see some Mukaro owls up there. We must not harm them. They are a symbol of good spirits for us. Good, my dear wise Bohike. I can always count on you to help us. Let's rest now, as we all had a long day with our huracan passing by our villages. Tomorrow we must see how our farm crops are. There was so much rain and wind. Yes, Kazike. Good night. I must go back to... Dear, the baby will not be able to sleep tonight as the coquis are really singing so loud. The storm has frightened them and they are jumping everywhere. <sighs> I know, Mother Bibi. The wind, then the rain and thunder, and now the coquis. Who can sleep? Well, Tamana. At least we are warm and safe here in our Boio hut. Hmm, that's true, Bibi Atariba. But I still can't sleep. Can you tell me a story? A story? Which one? We have so many legends about our animals. Well, tell me why the Koki frogs sing so much. And only here in Borinkin do they sing their funny song. All right, Tamana, if we'll make you sleepy. Fly down in your hamaka, and I will tell you how the little Koki frog got his voice. <sighs> Good, Bibi Atariba. Tell me what happened long ago. <sighs> Long ago, when the island had very little people and everything was so quiet, all the animals started to get very fat and lazy. This made the king of the animals, the green parrot Hiwaka, very angry. Look at yourselves, he said with disgust. You have allowed our peaceful island to make you think that you no longer have to be alert and strong. Hmm. Hmm. Tomorrow at sundown, there is going to be a race right here where we are now. Choose one of your best to represent yourselves. There will be only one winner. No one will be punished and the winner will receive a very nice prize. All the animals chose their best representative except the poor little cocky frog. 
so tiny and at that time unable to make even a sound. But the little frogs would not give up and they chose their fastest and biggest coquille frog. The next day, all the animals gathered in the same area for the big race. King Hiwaka, the parrot, arrived to begin the race and then he said, go! All the animals were rushing and running and the poor Koki was stepped on. Where was he? So tiny. But then the brave little Koki frog jumped high above them and reached the finish line and everyone cheered. All the Kokis were so happy, but they could not make any sounds. So no one could hear them shouting with joy. Then King Hiwaka the parrot told the brave Koki frog that he was the winner and that the special prize was a gift. Hiwaka then chanted and chanted a sacred song. Soon all the Kokis were singing their special song and since then, every evening, here in Borinke, do they sing their special song. Tamana, Tamana, are you asleep? Oh, I am so sleepy, Mother. I like the storm. Tamana, the Konuku farm is all right. I need to work my koa stick in the earth and prepare it for the seeds. Please chase any birds away while I work. I will, Bibi. You know I like to chase the birds and parrots away. Good, Tamana. Hmm. Look here. There is a lot of water in some areas. I hope our yucca and corn are not damaged. Go away, parrots. Go back to the rainforest. Oh, Bibi, I love the parrots, but they want to eat our seeds. They're going away, dear. You chase them away. I know, Tamana. They are lovely, but we don't want any birds to eat our crops. Oh, Bibi, do we have enough yucca to make cassava bread? Just enough, dear. We will have to do our cooking in a little while. I am almost finished now here in the Konuko. We will be going home soon. The village people of Guanya were all busy the day after a storm had passed by. The god Hurakan did not come down on them, and they were all happy. It was time to celebrate and be thankful. So the Kasika chief, Aguibana, decided to have a celebration. He played his sacred drum while the Buhike went to the main square, the Bate, and had an Areito. Everyone came, everyone danced and celebrated that Huracan did not come down on them.
lived a daughter of a cacique. Her name was Alida. She was a Taino, just like us. She loved to go to a waterfall not too far from where she lived. This was Alida's little secret place. One day, when she was at the waterfall's pool, she was surprised by a visitor, a young boy of her own age. He came over to her and they became friends. They liked to talk for a long time. He told her his name was Taru and that his people were from the Carib tribe, a different tribe, not Tainos like us. Alida was happy to have a new friend, but when he told her he was from the Carib tribe, she became frightened. But Caribs are the enemies of the Tainos, she exclaimed. Taru tried to comfort her and said he would not harm her. He only wanted peace and to be her friend. Alida trusted him and soon their friendship turned into love for each other and they wanted to get married. But then one day, someone saw them and this person told Alida's father, the cacique, and Alida's father became very angry and did not allow her to see Taru anymore. Then the cacique arranged for her to marry someone else. Poor Alida, she cried and cried and asked the stars to help her not marry a man she did not love. The stars helped her and quickly changed her into a beautiful red flower. Meanwhile, poor Taru came every day to the waterfall. He waited and waited and did not know why his Alida had stopped coming. Then one night, the moon saw Taru and told him that Alida was turned into a red flower. Taru was so happy, he wanted to know which flower, but the moon could not tell him which one. So the moon changed Taru into a hummingbird, a colibri, and ever since he has been searching every flower, looking for his beloved Alida. Phoebe, I love that story, but it's so sad. Every time I see a red flower, I will not harm it. It could be the one the colibri is looking for. That's true, dear. Now we have finished our cassava bread, and we can now go back to our bohio hut. It was at that time that strange men were approaching the island, and they came in very strange ships, much bigger than the large piragua canoes the villagers used. Guati and his father Baba were fishing when they saw the big ships coming closer. Baba, Baba, look, what strange piragua canoes. 
and so many. Oh, this must be the strangers that came to our neighbor island, Kiskeja, before. They are probably the white people who have hair on their face and wear a strange clothes. Bojique, Bojique, tell me, is it true that we have foreign visitors? Yes, Casito. Many large piraguas, bigger than our piragua canoes, out of the cold. Oh, I'm afraid that what I did last night is coming true. What do you mean? You had a bad dream? I do not know if it's bad, Cacique. I just saw many ships arriving in my dream, with strangers in different clothes. Speaking a different song. Do you think these are the same white men with hair on their faces that arrived in Kiskeya several moons ago? Yes, I think. The canoes are like large piraguas, and they have the same marking that the strangers had when they went to Kiskeya. But our Taino brothers in Kiskeya have told us is that there are strangers of different kinds of weapons that make fire and that they bring very big animals with them. Well, we shall see if they come in peace. We must prepare our welcome gifts and greet them. Come. We must let our people know what is happening. And so, my friends, it was on November 19th, 1493, that Christopher Columbus, on his second trip, arrived with 1,200 men in 17 ships to the shores of Borinquen. Cacique Agüeybana and his Nitaino sub-chiefs went to greet them, bringing many gifts. Tierra tan preciosa, te nombro Isla de San Juan Bautista. Ah, what a beautiful island. I name you San John the Baptist. ¿Qué dicen? What are they saying? Taino ti, Taino ti, Tao, Tao, Borinquen, Borinquen. <coughs> Taino ti, Taino ti, Tao, Tao, Borinquen, Borinquen. Guau, guau, Taino ti, Taino ti, Tao, Tao, Borinquen, Borinquen. Borinquen began to change into what we now call the island of Puerto Rico. Ayata Bay, the Earth Mother, still look over my Taino children who are still around and over my other island children who have many new cultures and traditions since the day strangers arrived and later others came from Africa. Our island is still a Taino paradise, but now with many other cultures added. We Tainos gave the strangers our language, our customs, music, and our land. We Boricuas now have. And we still like to celebrate our retos, but maybe in a different manner. 